Dear students, you are welcome in my online teaching classes. I am Shishma Chauhan and today I have brought for you 30 questions on English literature and this video 4. Let me begin with first question according to the beginning of the Paradise Lost, Paradise Lost book 1 whose first disobedience brought death to the whole mankind. You must have read Paradise Lost book 1 and two written by John Milton and uh, you must know who's disobe who disobeyed who, like that uh, Saturn's disobedience was that uh, responsible for bringing death to whole mankind it was Beelzebub or it was Mephistopheles or it was Adam so you must know dear students it was Adam Adam was alone and then he uh, must have requested for a female, uh, female friend, you can say companion. He was provided to him as female companion in uh, Garden of Eden. And he tasted that apple, forbidden fruit. So that was the disobedience. First disobedience that brought uh, mortality to human beings. Otherwise, if he had not done so, if uh, Adam had not done so, we would have been all mortal, right? Second question, who was the next to crime according to, okay, uh, le let me explain in Hindi also, some student demand Hindi. Uh, Paradise Lost ki jo shuruwati line hai, shuruwat hoti hai is, uh, is book ki, book one ki, तो उसमें किसके डिसोबिडियंस ने अवज्ञा ने अवज्ञा बोलेंगे डिसोबिडियंस आज्ञा न मानना तमाम होल मैनकाइंड को मोर्टेलिटी दी डेथ दी सेटन या बिल्जिबब या मेथिस्टोपलिस ये एडम एडम और ईव दोनों गार्डन ऑफ ईडन में रहते थे और तो एडम ने फॉरबिडन फ्रूट टेस्ट किया तब ये बात बनी let me come to the question two. Who was the next to crime? According to your study of the first book of the epic Paradise Lost, next to crime means second. Uh, to whom? Uh, who was next to crime to Saturn, you can say. Next to crime to Saturn. According to your study of the first book of the epic Paradise Lost, it was Beelzebub. Malok, Shirab, Mephistopheles. Yes, guess please. It was Beelzebub, Malok, or you may say Maloch, uh, Malok, Shirab, or Mephistopheles. Let me tell you about all these. Beelzebub was second in command, right? Beelzebub was the second in command to. Uh, sec, uh, Saturn's helper was he was sec, uh, sec, uh, Saturn's helper you can say second in command well, a rash irrational and murderous devil you may see in the picture this uh, this is uh, legendary or uh, conventionally uh, this uh, the picture comes in about uh, Malok as rash, irrational, murderous devil. Shirab, Shirab is one of the unearthly beings. Those are not human beings who directly attend to God according to Abrahamic religions. Their original duty have been the protection of the Garden of Eden. Right? Garden of Eden in which Adam and Eve lived. Mephistopheles, you know about this person, that was not person, that was devil, is a demon featured in German folklore. He originally appeared in literature as the demon in Faust legend. Dr. Faustus, you must have read, written by uh, Christopher Marlowe. In, and Dr. Faustus was a scholar, he was thirsty for knowledge, right? And he sold his soul, he did a bargain with Mephistopheles and he uh, got 24 years for 
his voluptuous life. And after 24 years, Mephistopheles came to capture his soul. So that was tragedy of Dr. Foster's. So the answer is Beelzebub was, and see the question again, who was the next to crime according to your study of the first book of the epic paradise lost it was Beelzebub and next question who said the following lines farewell happy fields where joy forever dwells hail horror hail infernal world who said these words Satan, Beelzebub, Mephistopheles Adam and you, up to now you must have come about Mephistopheles he belonged to he, he, he was in Dr. Foster's play, that uh, Christopher's play, Mephistopheles, uh, we come across in the play Dr. Foster's written by Marlowe, Christopher Marlowe. So Adam also belonged to Paradise Lost, Saturn, Beelzebub, these three characters are found in Paradise Lost. So Satan, when he was overthrown, he, he was in hell and, uh, and surrounded by hellish fires. He said, these farewell happy fields where joy forever dwells. He was uh, uh, remembering about uh, heaven where joy dwells, joy dwells forever, right? Saturn in Paradise Lost, written by John Milton, the 17th century poet, said those were lines. Who said the Milton was of uh, the devil's party without knowing it? You may see the picture of William Wordsworth, and, and this is picture of William Wordsworth, and this is Esti Coleridge. And in the uh, coming slides, I'll show you William Blake also, Hazard also. I'll show you the pictures of, so that you may remember their images and names can be memorized in that way. So who said Milton was the devil's party without knowing it? Guess it was William Wordsworth, it was William Blake or Hazlitt or Esti Coleridge. Answer is William Blake. This is a picture of William Blake you are watching. Early poet of romantic type of poetry unrecognized in his time. William Blake was not recognized, but now considered influential figure in the field of poetry and visual art. He was an uh, artist also. He painted pictures and he wrote uh, a famous collection of the poems, Songs of Innocence and Songs of Experience. Those are very famous title for the poems. So William Blake, he was early poet of the Romantic period and after that uh, uh, they got recognition on the poets, uh, Wordsworth, Coleridge, Shelley, Keats, Byron. Who said in praise of William Shakespeare's the following lines, others avoid our question, thou art free, we ask and ask, thou smilest and art still. It was William Hazlitt, S.T. Coleridge, Matthew Arnold, or Robert Browning. P see the pictures of, uh, first picture is of uh, Hazlitt, this one, and this one is Robert Browning. 19th century poet, Victorian poet, and having robust uh, optimism. He was the only poet of his period who had optimism and others were pessimistic poets. As he Coleridge was contemporary of William Wordsworth and Matthew Arnold also was the contemporary poet of Browning and who said others avoid our question, thou art free, we ask and ask, thou smilest and art still, see the answer. Matthew Arnold wrote in his poem Shakespeare and see the picture of Matthew Arnold and this is Esti Coleridge and let me tell you about William Hazlitt also. Hazlitt, uh, he was born in 1778 and lived up to 1830, was a vigorous writer having an easy straightforward style. He wrote 
essays that have the flavor of conversation. Okay, let, let's move to another question. Who called William Shakespeare myriad minded? Multi minded. Yes, yes. T.S. Eliot, see the picture of this is modern poet, critic, and poet. Ezra Pound, F.R. Lewis, you may see the picture of F.R. Lewis also, and this is his picture. F.R. Lewis here. S.T. Coleridge, you had seen that picture also. So guess about it was T.S. Eliot. Answer might have come in your mind. Let's move to the answer. It was Frank Raymond F.R. Lewis. Uh, full name was Frank Raymond Lewis. And the picture of Ezra Pound you may see in this slide. Seventh question. Who defined comedy and tragedy in the following lines? Life is a comedy to those who think. And life is a comedy to those who think and a comedy to those who feel. No, tragedy to those who feel. So I apologize for this error uh, here by mistake. This uh, error is done by mistake, okay? It's very good defense given by people I uh, I am also giving you and this is a uh, print error okay printing error comedy or typing error you can say life is a comedy to those who think and a tragedy to those who feel right William Shakespeare Hazlitt Charlton Horace Walpole who said do you know this no okay it's Horace Walpole. See the picture of Horace Walpole also. All right. Do you do you like these pictures? Tell me in comments also. Which one of the following women dominate in the play? The Tempest. You must know whenever you study literature or play uh, any play or any poem or any novel, please learn the names of characters. Learn the names of quotable quotes, important lines, and other thing. Theme also. What was the theme about? And main characters. It was Rosalind. Oh, I have given the names. It has been done for you. Okay, I didn't mean to write the names here, and it has been written by anyway. Okay, you must know the. Answers now the tempest goes to Miranda. Miranda was the heroine of the tempest and she dominated the play. And Bola dominated in Twelfth Night. California uh, didn't dominate, okay. Uh, just options are given. Rosalind was in As You Like, Miranda was in the tempest and Vola was in Twelfth Night, California was in Julius Caesar, but we are to select one name who dominated the play, The Tempest. Others three options are given, but it's not necessary that they have dominated their plays, right? Answer is Miranda. And see Rosaline, as you like it, this picture is given to you, this one. And Miranda uh, is here, she is Miranda. And Calpurnia, this is Calpurnia, Julius Caesar's wife. Julius Caesar had three wives, you must know about it. And, right, and Vola is this one. Right, let's move. Which one of the following women dominate in the play The Tempest? We have done this, I think. Miranda is, she is Miranda in The Tempest. And she was Calpurnia and... Uh, she was uh, uh, Rosalind and she was Vola, Vola right? That's uh, this answer. Uh, Calpurnia was the third and last wife of Julius Caesar. He had three wives, Cornelia, Pompeia and Calpurnia, right? And answer was Miranda. Now move to question 10. Portia is the heroine of which play out of the following? Macbeth, as you like it, The Merchant of Venice, 
Hamlet, okay, answers have been given here. The Merchant of Venice, Portia was a character, lady character, women character, woman character in the Merchant of Venice. Answer are given, this has been explained, see the photo, Lady Macbeth, she is rubbing her hands and she had a hand in killing King Duncan. She provoked her husband, she incited her husband Macbeth to kill the Duncan so that it, the, Macbeth, the, uh, the play Macbeth is about ambition, vaulting ambition. It's the tragedy of vaulting ambition. Merchant of Venice, Portia, she is Portia here, and uh, Ophelia, Hamlet, Hamlet's queen, you can say, Hamlet's fiancée. The play, The Twelfth Night, was written in the celebration of which festival? Whit Monday, Christmas, Epiphany, Epiphany, Easter. There are four. Uh, festivals of the Christ, Christians here you may tell out of one out of these four you have to uh, take one answer that is correct okay see Epiphany 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 also called Theophany or Three Kings Day is a Christmas feast day that celebrates the revelation of God incarnate as Jesus and so Whit Monday is also celebrated in April. Uh, it continues for about one or two months. Christmas, you know, Epiphany and Easter, these are four Christian festivals. Okay, now move to twelfth question. Which of the Shakespeare's play has the following line in the opening scene? If music, music be the food of love, play on, give me access of it. Give me access of it, okay? Twelfth night, a midsummer night dream, King Lear, Romeo and Juliet. Answer is twelfth night, act one, scene one. Okay, twelfth night, act one, scene one. Which one of the Shakespeare's plays has the following lines in its act one, scene one? When shall we three meet again in thunder, lightning or in rain? Who said this? Which one? Uh, we are to uh, talk, uh, we, we are to tell about the play. It was Twelfth Night, it was Mid Midsummer's Night Dream, or Macbeth or Romeo and Juliet. See the answer in Macbeth, spoken by the three witches. These are the three witches and uh, Bonko and Macbeth are returning from some battle. And three witches stop them, and she is uh, one of the three witches said those things. Which one of the Shakespeare's play has the following lines in its uh, Act One, Scene One? When the hurly burly done, hurly burly is done. When the battle lost, battle is lost and won. Yes, which play? Twelfth Night, A Midsummer's Night Dream. King Lear and Macbeth, you must guess, you must have guessed about it. Battle lost and won when the hurly burly is done, right? This is Macbeth, spoken by these three witches. One of the three witches is saying uh, to Macbeth, one of the three witches says the above lines to Macbeth. Who are the three in the following lines? When shall we three meet again in thunder, lightning or in rain? Again, Banco, Banco, Macduff, Lunax, these are characters from Macbeth. Laertes, Claudius, Potipras, these are characters from Hamlet. Duke of Albany, Edmund, Edgar, these are three characters from King Lear. And the three which is, you know, characters from Macbeth. So answer was three which is, these three which is. Which of the following plays has the following line? Something is rotten in the state of Denmark. Merchant of Venice. These lines occur in Merchant of Venice. Richard II, Hamlet, Tempest. 
Yes, guess please. Something is rotten in the state of Denmark. Who was the prince of Denmark? Hamlet. Hamlet was the prince of Denmark. Which one of the following characters has spoken the following lines? Something is rotten in the state of Denmark. Marcellus, Lartes, Claudius or Hamlet? Who said this? Okay, these lines occur in, uh, you have seen something is rotten in the state of Denmark. It's certain that these lines occur in Hamlet. You have come to know about this. But who spoke these lines? You are to see that. Who spoke these lines? It was Marcellus, it was Lartes, it was Claudius or Hamlet. Marcellus. Acts 1, scene 4 in Hamlet. It was Marcellus. In which Shakespeare's plays is the following character there? Sir Toby, very, very rhythmic name, Sir Toby, right? And it must be uh, very easy for you to remember this character Sir Toby. Sir Toby, who is Sir Toby? Twelfth night, measure for measure, two gentlemen of Verona, winter's tale. And you must be thinking about two gentlemen of Verona, and this is a uh, this is uh, a lesson in 10th class also, but uh, in that title, the I is added, the two gentlemen of Verona. But here we have two gentlemen of Verona. This is the only difference between these two titles. In Shakespearean play, the I is not there. And in uh, that lesson of class 10, uh, A.J. Cronin wrote that, Da is there. So you are to tell me Sir Toby was a character in which play. See the answer, Twelfth Night. Remember this please. Who wrote the following famous line? The web of our life is of a mingled yarn, good and ill together. Who wrote? Matthew Arnold? Thomas Hardy, the novelist, George Bernard Shaw, the dramatist, William Shakespeare, the dramatist, yes, Matthew Arnold was a poet. William Shakespeare, in All's Well That Ends Well, this was also Shakespeare's play, All's Well That Ends Well. So in that play, the web of our life is of a mingled yarn, good and Ill together. Much has been said about joys and sorrows also. The name of King Lear's youngest daughter in Shakespeare's play King Lear is, you must be knowing that there uh, in King Lear, the king had three daughters, Cordelia, Regan and Goneril. Yes, you are to tell the name of the youngest. Who was the youngest of them? Cordelia. King Lear had three daughters, Goneril was the eldest, Regan was the middle one and Cordelia was the youngest one. In which of Shakespeare's plays we find the following famous lines? As flies to Wenton boys are we to the gods, they kill us for their sport. King John, King Lear, Tempest, Merry Wives of Windsor. These are four plays written by Shakespeare. And have you heard about Merry Wives of Windsor or King John? Right? These are also from Shakespeare. Right? He wrote those plays. King Lear had three daughters. And so, uh, as flies to Wenton boys, these lines belong to King Lear. Who is the writer of the following novel, Arms and the Man? Very famous novel. Arms and the Man. Uh, this is not a novel, this is a drama, Arms and the Man. Okay, uh, correction, please make a correction. Uh, it's a drama, Arms and Man. Bernard Shaw, uh, because dialogues are there, it's a uh, this play is about a fugitive, right, who enters Rana's chamber uh, and Bernard Shaw, Ernest Hemingway, George Eliot or D.H. Lawrence. 
Who is the writer? Arms of the arms and of arms and men. Bernard Shaw is the writer of Arms and Men. Which one of the following characters uttered the following famous lines? As flies to went and boys, and you must know these uh, these lines occur in King Lear, and you are to tell the character who spoke those lines. It was Duke of Cornwall, it was Edmund, or it was. Gloucester, a Duke of Albany. Just guess, please. It was Gloucester, right? Which one of the following plays written by William Shakespeare has one of its themes, filial ingratitude? Any play of Shakespeare based on the, one of its themes, filial ingratitude. Cimberlin, Othello, King Lear, Hamlet. Please guess. King Lear is the correct answer. And filial means of a son or a daughter. Gratitude of uh, ingratitude uh, of daughter or a son. It was the ingratitude from a daughter. In which play written by Shakespeare, the main character, who is a king, becomes insane. Insane means mad. Uh, which king becomes mad in which play? Uh, right? Uh, king Lear, King John, Julius Caesar, Macbeth. You must guess. So the answer is King Lear, he becomes mad. Insane. Who is the writer of the play Duchess of Malfi? Ben Johnson, Christopher Marlowe, John Webster or William Shakespeare? Okay. Guess please. Ben Johnson was also dramatist. Christopher Marlowe was also dramatist. He was two months elder than Shakespeare. Elder two. Elder two. Elder takes two. Elder two Shakespeare. Uh, we should not use elder. Older to Shakespeare. We go older and you must know the difference between elder and older. Older uh, elder is used in family, in blood relation you can say, but we use older for others. So Christopher Marlowe was older by two months to William Shakespeare. John Webster was also dramatist, right? You are to tell the name of it. was John Webster who wrote uh, uh, that Duchess of Malfi, and he was known by these three dramas, The Devil's Law, the White Devil and Duchess of Malfi. Which one of the following plays has a character named Busola? Very petty name. Dutch, Duchess of Malfi, Webster's, Comedies of Errors, Shakespeare's, The White Devil, Webster's, The Devil's Law Case, Webster's. So which one of the following plays has character named? It's in Duchess of Murphy or in Comedy of Errors or in White Devil or in Devil's Show? Answer is Duchess of Murphy. Right. This character is found in Duchess of Murphy. In which play do the following lines occur? Cover her face, mine eyes, dazzle. She died young. King Lear, King John, Julius Caesar, Duchess of Malfi. Yes, guess please. Cover her face, my eyes dazzle. She died young. Who died young? Duchess of Malfi died young. And her brother utters those lines. Which one of the following characters uttered the lines, following line? Cover her face, my eyes dazzle. She died young. Duke of Cornwall, Edmund, Ferdinand, Duke of Alba Albany. Who? Ferdinand spoke these lines after seeing his sister's dead body, Duchess of Malfi. Right. Last question is, which of the following plays is not written by Webster? Answer is clear to you. It's comedy of errors. I have written these answers so that uh, uh, time, uh, less time can be taken. Duchess of Malfi, Webster's, Comedy of Errors, Shakespeare's, 
the white devil websters the devil of law case websters and comedy of error written by shakespeare this is not written by john webster full name answer is given here okay the video lecture four on the multiple choice question and answers on english literature ends up here and for updates please click on the button subscribe and it's free of course to subscribe that uh, needs no cost for you that doesn't cost any money my channel is shishpal chauhan yamunanagar if you open if you feed uh, the